In the depths of the sky wanders light Silent in its journey through the endless night Welcome, Comet Chasers. We're a little late this month, Greg, and people don't like that. Yeah, less, but it couldn't be helped. I just got back from the El Dorado Star Party in Texas, where I did a talk. So what do we have going on this month? Well, we've still got a great comet for binoculars and small telescopes. Yeah, just because the media thinks it's all over doesn't make it so. And what a nice comet it was. You can argue if this comet was a so-called great comet or not, but I'll always remember it as one of my favorites. We'll be showing a sample of the breathtaking images that were taken in October. We'll also be looking at what happened to the so-called Halloween comet, and oh, there's a new comet that might just be something special. Finally, we'll take a moment to recommend a good telescopic comet. In October, Tsuchin Shan Atlas put on a really nice show. We hope everyone was able to see it. The comet passed between us and the sun on the 9th, just passing above it from our point of view. This is one of the reasons it was so bright. Now, the tail points away from the sun, so that means it was more or less pointing right at us on the 9th. But as the days passed, we saw more and more of the tail, as well as seeing it higher in a darker sky. The difference between the evening of the 13th and 14th was remarkable, with the tail growing from 7 degrees to nearly 20 degrees long. This wasn't because the tail grew longer, but due to our changing viewing angle, which allowed us to see the tail more fully, more from the side. This was one of the longest and thinnest tails we can recall. So what we were seeing was the dust tail. Where was that classic blue ion tail? Well, it was on top of the dust tail from our point of view, which made it difficult to see. The best comet to see right now is still Tsuchin Shan Atlas. In fact, if what we can see of it in November was the best it would get, we would still be celebrating it. It is a bright binocular comet with a nice tail that is visible away from the horizon in a dark sky among the stars and nebulae of the Milky Way. So let's look at what we can see this month. As the month begins, you may be able to glimpse a two and one half degree tail. By the middle of the month, the tail will likely have shrunk to a degree and a half. As seen in the Northern Hemisphere at a suburban or country location, Tsuchin Shan Atlas will be an easy target in 7x50 binoculars through the night of November 5th. After that, you will have to look a little harder to spot it. After the night of the 16th, it will become difficult and be more difficult with each passing night through the end of the month. If you can get to a dark site, it will be easy through the night of the 10th and visible through the end of the month. And from a dark site, it will remain perceptible in small telescopes through the end of the year. As seen in the Southern Hemisphere at a suburban or country location, Tsuchin Shan Atlas will be visible in 7x50 binoculars through the night of November 11th. After that, it will become difficult, and more difficult with each passing night through the end of the month. By the night of the 25th, this should no longer be detectable. From a dark site, it will be easy through the night of the 8th and perceptible through November 19th, with the exception of the 15th when it will be difficult. After the 19th, it will quickly become more difficult to spot until it is lost after the 26th. After December 2nd, it will no longer be visible in small telescopes, even from a dark site. Greg, there were reports of a second bright comet coming at the end of October, but nothing came of it. Yeah, and you might have also noticed that we never mentioned it here, in our comments or on our Comet Chasing webpage. So what was the deal? Less, there was a failure here, caused by a combination of factors, none of which were the fault of the comet. On October 2nd, the Minor Planet Center reported the designation of a newly discovered comet, and there was a CBET, or Central Bureau for Astronomical Telegrams, issued as well. The fast reporting of new comets has been a thing for a very long time, so there are still some quaint old-fashioned terms used. Observations and orbits were published. But in the days before that, there had been discussion of the comet when it was still on the PCCP. That means the possible comet confirmation page, where comets are kept track of before they become official. The first mention was a post to the comet group with the subject, New Relatively Huge Kreutz Sungrazer. The poster claimed in the text of the message that it was massive. 
Great sun grazers pass very close to the sun. Some of them only become visible in the images taken by the SOHO satellite, which watches the sun and its immediate vicinity. These images are posted online, and there's a group of amateurs who closely follow comets that come into the view of the satellite. The vast majority of these comets are small, but some of the presumably larger ones can become quite bright. Bright, that is, in terms of what is seen on these images. Even a super bright one would be difficult to see from Earth because they are only bright very close to the sun. So there's a completely different meaning of bright and massive for these amateurs than for comets in general. And this was later explained clearly by the original poster. So, as often happens, the excitement of a few in a relatively specialized way was misinterpreted for a general audience by those who don't understand the subtleties involved, and those who simply don't care. It sounds exciting, so that will make a great thumbnail. Eventually, it failed to brighten as hoped, and then it actually faded, and then it appeared to begin to disintegrate. After it appeared in the SOHO satellite images, it faded into nothing. Based on the speculation on the Comet Forum and the lack of realization that people can get excited by a bright comet without it being something that the public can even see, we got some misleading headlines. Even after it was clear that the comet couldn't be seen from the Earth or began to disintegrate, we got headlines like this one. I saw a lot of stories claiming the comet was flying into the sun. It never flew into the sun. It also didn't literally burn up, as widely reported. It basically just fell apart. And don't get me started on how spooky this all was. Any other time of year, nobody would have called it spooky. Greg, in talking to you, you seem kind of bitter about that. Les, I just think people deserve to be treated respectfully, like adults. And science and the natural world around us should also be treated with respect. You know, rather than like, everyone is stupid. Many people have a legitimate interest in comets, what they are, and seeing one for themselves, but it's difficult to cut through all the noise to get a legitimate news story. I find that frustrating, and in the wider picture, it worries me. I was listening to a book by Carl Sagan on the road home, and he was pretty worried about science education going way back, even 50 years ago. If people get this steady stream of misleading and often conflicting science information, who could blame them for thinking science itself is nonsense? I think that was one of Sagan's big fears, and he did so much to try to make things better. But I can't help think that he'd be really dismayed with the state of reliable science information today. Anyhow, this comet was never bright enough to be visible from the Earth, and it's gone now. Beware that some software and online sources will continue to show it in the sky. There's a new comet that's potentially very interesting. It's called C2024 G3 Atlas, another discovery by the Atlas Survey. By the way, Atlas stands for the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System, which is a set of four telescopes in Hawaii, Chile, and South Africa developed by the University of Hawaii and funded by NASA. They specialize in asteroids that pass close to the Earth. Their goal is to spot small, 20-meter asteroids several days away from Earth, and larger, more dangerous asteroids several weeks out. In the process, they've been discovering a lot of comets, and so the comets get named after the project. That name, in parentheses, after the comet's designation is the discoverer, Sometimes they are discovered on the same night by more than one person or organization, so the name gets hyphenated, like Suchinshan Atlas. But getting back to this comet, its orbit takes it close to the Sun within 0.1 astronomical units, or one-tenth of the distance between the Earth and Sun. Some early projections have it getting very bright at that time, but it's very dependent on how you interpret the current magnitude data. There is this apparent jump in brightness in the last couple of weeks, and it's not yet clear if that's real, or an outburst, or what. Even it, it does get very bright, it will be very close to the sun at that time, and it's too early to tell how visible it, it will be from Earth. This could be a repeat of the comet we just talked about, 2024S1. People can see those bright magnitude estimates and start making assumptions, 
Once that gets reported somewhere, it gets repeated. It's not always a junk news problem either. It was widely reported that Suchinshan Atlas wouldn't come back for another 80,000 years, something that had Greg and I baffled. We couldn't really make that kind of claim for the comet. Nobody has any idea when or if it will ever come back, and it doesn't really matter because we won't be around for it. Apparently, the source was a blog by a NASA scientist who apparently quoted the minimum time that it might come back in. I doubt he meant it the way it was reported. You know, the once-in-a-lifetime comet. In reality, almost all bright comets are once-in-a-lifetime. What I'll never understand is why they need to add this once-in-a-lifetime nonsense in the first place. I guess they need to spice it up or the editor will pass on it. Gotta sell those clicks even if they think of themselves as a reliable news source. Hey, it's only a comet. It has no real importance to everyday people, right? But it's also hard to find the right language sometimes, especially if you're excited about the prospect of a comet. There was a comment on last month's video where the poster said that they had seen the comet and it was incredible. But that's incredible in the sense of someone who loves comets. That's incredible in the sense that they understood how cool it was. You bring in a random person and they may see just a fuzzy check mark in the sky, right? So how do we express excitement without misleading people? It's tricky. I guess it comes down to what your goal is. Are you trying to educate and inform people? Do you want to share the interesting experience of seeing a comet with others? Or are you only interested in getting clicks or views? Sadly, the advertising model typically leads to the latter. This month we're going to finish by covering a telescopic comet, which is really what comet chasing is all about. C-2022. E-2 Atlas is a northern hemisphere comet visible in an 8-inch or 20-centimeter telescope from a dark site. It is in Camelopardalis. Depending on the moon, it will be visible most of the night, including the evenings especially near the end of the month. There are two periods of visibility, the first through the 13th, and again on and after the 21st. If you are in the northern hemisphere and have an 8-inch or larger scope, why not add it to your observing list for the night? It's reported to be about an arc minute in diameter, with up to a 6-arc minute tail. The center of the coma is much brighter than the edges, though still diffuse. This comet passed perihelion in mid-September, way out at 3.7 astronomical units nearly as far as Jupiter. But it's big and bright enough to be seen in telescopes. Even though it's on its way back out to the edges of the solar system from whence it came, it will continue to brighten until the end of the month. Well, that's it for this month. Enjoy Tsuchinshan Atlas while it lasts, and we'll see you back here with next month's comets. On behalf of Greg and myself, happy comet chasing.